Primal Chaos. Hey guys, Primal Chaos here. Welcome to the channel. So, lately my output on this channel has been pretty low uh, because I've been working on other creative ventures and things like that. So I haven't been putting out as many videos, but it means I've got to be really precise about what I choose and the trajectory I go through, you know, stuff I've been through before and covered. Because a lot of times people request things. They're like, oh, if you love this song, you're going to do that. You know, you're going to love this, whatever. Uh, so I got to be mindful of always making sure I check back in with artists that I've really appreciated in the past. And I don't think I've appreciated any of the rock bands more than one OK Rock. As I mentioned in previous videos, I did have the opportunity to catch them live briefly at Good Things Festival in Australia a couple of years ago, where unfortunately their set conflicted with another band that I've been a huge fan of for many, many years. And I had to leave halfway through. And I really regret it. I should have stayed because, you know, I'd, I'd learned about one OK Rock a week or two before I went to that show. And I thought, I, I definitely have to check them out. Uh, and honestly, their set was probably the best on stage live sound of the entire day. Uh, also, they had a stage presence. They had a really interactive audience that were really getting into it as well. Um, and so I kind of regret leaving that stage and heading over to another one. So, you know, I've been trying to make up for it, but I've done a few reactions. If you search Primal Chaos and 1OK Rock, you'll find a couple of things. But it's been probably a couple of years since I, I checked back in. And fortunately, when I had a look this morning, there was a new video that was only uh, 12 days old. And so this video has only recently dropped and I really wanted to check it out. So here we are. But without further ado, let's dive right in. Uh, I've got no idea what kind of music this is because uh, they tend to do some pretty diverse stuff. But uh, let's have a look. This is called One OK Rock Delusion. Delusion colon all. Uh... Delusional, delusional, interesting. Okay, all right, I, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, is it delusional? I, I assume it is, just a clever way of writing it. Here we go. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. Actually, before we get too far into it, it's an interesting choice so far. I'm not, I'm not sure if they're going to shift gears or whatever, but they've got a really swung rhythm to this. So in, in rock and roll, we tend to have this expression like four on the floor, right? Which is like a, a straight four, four beat um, without any sort of real variation. You can put it on a grid very easily if you wanted to graph it out, right? And what that means is like, you know, go like straight. It's usually really good for choruses too because they drive really hard. You can sort of play around with them. But what they've done here is they've got a, a really swung groove. And what we mean by that is there's a little bit of space between some of the kick drum hits before the snare comes in. And what it does is it sort of almost creates this bridge of tension and release. So rather than having like cut, cut, now you've got cut, cut. Right, and you get this kind of, um, like I said, tension and release, like this build up, and you can sort of really creatively build on that to have music that sounds rock but very different, and uh, that's really clever. Also, I love that intro sound. I think if I listen again, I'm fairly certain it's just a piano. Yeah, they've gotten a piano. Uh, um, they're playing some sort of. whatever it is, um, but they've sort of put a reverb on it so it sounds like the piano's in another room and I think some sort of EQ sort of effects and stuff like that that seem like they sweep through. So you get, starts really muffled and ends up with more clarity. I'm sure it's just a synth patch on a keyboard or something like that, but it's just really clever because it gives this intro a really organic movement to it that sort of sounds like it's growing, it's organic, right? Because it's changing over time. Let's jump back again. Definitely a piano, yeah. That sort of rhythm is just really kind of bouncy and fun. Yeah, right on. Yeah, 
Oh, nice. Ah, see, that's why I love Taka, man. First, let's let's talk about his vocal tone. He has this sort of an interesting sort of inflection where he sort of he sighs into a lot of notes. Um, it's almost like he's flipping between almost like a falsetto kind of sigh into his into his I don't know if it's his chest voice or whatever, but he's projecting it uh, in a way that sort of sounds exasperated, right? He's always ah -ha! into the note, and it's kind of like it sounds dramatic and interesting. Uh, but it also sounds like there's emotion. He could be singing about a box of cereal and you'd feel it, right? And, I, and I, I really love that. The other thing is rhythmically, he's so clever because, again, you've got this swung beat, right? But he's playing around with this triplet feel. He's not sitting there just singing triplets. You see that a lot in rap a lot lately because rap used to be very much on the one. And then, you know, it sort of evolved and became more complex over time. And then you got to the point where people were starting to throw in interesting inflections, like like a like a triplet feel would be like, but da da but da da but da da but right over the top of stuff. And you, you often you'll see that at the end of phrases in rapping. So they'll they'll you know wrap a line out and then they'll end with like a da da but da 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 and then jump back in, and you get this kind of it sort of sounds again. It's all about creating tension and release. It sort of changes the compression of the rhythm to make you feel like an urgency or, or, or even sometimes even a relaxed feel, right? But he's doing that, but in a really guarded way where he's only throwing in occasional little accents. He might be only doing like two hits of the triplet feel, you know, to sort of come into a line that makes it sound interesting. Like, let me run that verse again. And you just hear him just flowing around so deftly as if it's effortless. With, with his rhythms. First of all, I love the change up into this major sort of feel as well, because it's it goes major, but it's not sunshine and roses. It sort of has like some some darkness to it and a little bit of like uh, a morose energy towards the end of the chorus as well. One, two, three, one, two, three, right? There's that triplet feel. Nice, man. Wow, that's really cool. There's that piano again. That was cool. It was like a little sample of like a crowd of children or something. And yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, it's cool. going on there first of all i love the change up for the for the bridge that's cool there's like a sound effect in there i thought it was a clean guitar but it doesn't look like he's playing anything there so maybe it's just another synth part that comes in I know. Crowd interaction, perfect.
What a cool song, man. That was cool. That was really cool. They're just so great at writing songs that have enough complexity without being overbearing and simplistic enough in their structure and arrangement to just be poppy, right? They have edge to them. It's There's definitely uh, like a lot of uh, metalcore influences there with some of the rhythmic, you know, the rhythm section parts and like, you know, the the low end detuned guitar riffs chugging away over, over that cool swung beat. But they kind of stand alone. They have their own flavor. And I mean, there's a million bands if you... If you like this, and this might say you're watching this and you're a, a one OK rock fan that doesn't delve much into the world of of uh, other like rock and metal performers, there's there's an abundance of things you could check out. Like Bring Me the Horizon would be the first one that comes to mind. Um, obviously, Linkin Park. I think Linkin Park were probably a bit of an influence on these guys as well at some point in their career because I keep forgetting how long these guys have been around. You know, they, they look so young and it's really distracting. <laughs> but you like, you think, oh yeah, these dudes are pretty new to the scene. But they, I know they've been around for like 15 or more years or something. But, you know, it's, it's um, they're just an interesting band. They sound great. As I mentioned, they're live on stage sound. They're just a, a, like a four piece typically, right? Yeah. Uh, it just sounded amazing compared to everyone else that day. You know, and uh, live sound is hit or miss. Usually with big festivals now, they've got this stuff dialed in and, you know, you generally get a pretty good sound on stage, but it's not always guaranteed, you know, and it also depends where you're standing. But every note I heard these guys play, I heard it. It was, they, they were just so good. Tucker's voice, I mean, I don't know that this is one of those songs that can really showcase his pushing his limits, but it definitely showcases how in the pocket he is as a singer and how he can make things seem easy because he's so, he definitely sort of maneuvers around everything in such a way that it doesn't sound hard. But I guarantee you, man, there's a lot to this. There's a lot of writing, melody writing, rhythmic writing and stuff that's gone into this, whether it was intuition on his part or whether he focused and, and sort of put together something. It's just ingenious. It's really good. And I think that, you know, there'd probably be a lot of people who'd cast a lazy eye across that song and go, oh, yeah, I've heard it before. But what they're missing is the undercurrent. Like the, it's like a duck, <laughs> right? When they're swimming on a lake, you see this duck just cruising around, but under the surface, you're seeing all of these paddling going on. And that's what these guys do so well. They, they hide the fact that everything they do is difficult and complex by making it sound easy and classic and, you know, just easy to listen to. It's so engaging and uplifting and energetic and, and powerful. Uh, that's their strength. And man, I'm, I really need to listen to more of these guys' stuff. I, I, I say that about all the bands I react to because I tend to sort of do the reactions, not listen to much else because sometimes you can, you know, you can spoil a reaction or you can, you can get over something because you heard the best of their stuff and then you check out the rest of their stuff and you're like, ah, I'm not super into everything else. But I feel like these guys would have a lot to offer in their catalog, in their deep catalog. Man, okay. Well, anyway, I've waffled on long enough. I hope you enjoyed this reaction. Definitely like, share, follow, subscribe. If you feel like I brightened your day at all, feel free to support the channel just by buying me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description. But definitely hit me up in the comments if I should check out anything else One OK Rock. Search to make sure you have, I haven't done it before because I've done a few, like I said. Tell me, tell me about, like, what do you like best about these guys? Because I know what I like. I've told you, you know, but I'd, I'd be keen to hear maybe people who aren't sort of into music production or are just fans of the band. I'd be really curious to hear what your insight is. What is it about these guys? Cause I know these guys have a dogged fan base. Like I said, I can tell you all the reasons I think they're great, but I'm looking at them from an outsider down there in the trenches. What is it about these guys? Is it the lyrics? Is it the, you know, the, the melodic content? Do you connect with them emotionally in their music? Do you just think Tuck is hot? Like whatever it is, I'd love to know in the comments. Cause it gives me some insight into what, the engine room of the fandom of a band is like, you know, but anyway, that's all I got to say. Thanks again, guys. Stay primal. I'll catch you on the next one.